All right, here is the DIY online scouting. This is for a spring turkey hunt we're going to do here in Idaho. Um, so I hope you enjoy. This is going to be a pretty all-inclusive thing. So we're going to flip through the regs, get to the turkey section. Um, I'm not going to be hunting with any youth that are within the age ranges there, so I don't have to worry about that. And I'm going to... Um, have another adult hunter with me going for turkeys for his first time. So we'll skip down here. We're looking for the hunt areas. And where these are controlled hunts, we have to find the area we want to hunt in and the corresponding hunt number. So the area we're looking at is 9003, 9004, and then 9009 and 9010 kind of this area of, of southwest Idaho. So even though this is from last year's regs, it's it, I mean it's the same thing every year. All you gotta check is the dates and if there's been any boundary changes. So make a note of what controlled hunt numbers you want to look into some more. I'm not going to worry about the fall hunts. Okay, and then here we've got controlled hunt numbers. Let's see here. All right, so again, we're not doing any youth, so 9003 and 9004 are out because both of those are youth only hunts. That leaves 9009 and 9010. The only real difference between the two, 9009 is in April 9010 is in May so depending on which end of um, kind of turkey mating season you want to be on you know and, and that kind of varies from year to year with the you know the, the weather plays into which one you'd rather hunt to as well so all you do is fill in your name and birth date your hunting license number and you can include your email address for yourself and then if you're going to apply with someone else same info for them and then down at the bottom we're gonna put 9009 and then 9010 those are the two hunts that we want to apply for so let's go ahead and take a look at the Idaho hunt planner it automatically comes up with all the game management units which we don't really need because we're applying for a controlled hunt and the controlled hunt boundaries don't always correspond with the game management units so we'll find controlled hunt areas for turkey. And let's look for WMAs within or you know around the state to see if there are any WMAs within the controlled hunt areas that we want to apply for. And then we're gonna skip on down here and change the base map. I prefer to use the Esri with labels. It's uh, kind of a, a pretty good satellite image of everything, and it'll include like town names and street names and things like that. So we'll get zoomed down in here to the controlled hunt areas we want and see what WMAs are within there. Alright, so we've got. We've got our two hunt areas, and we've got a couple different WMAs in here. We've got the Montour WMA, Payette River South, and Payette River North. I think, and, and so where that isn't, the, you've got three different WMAs across the two different areas. We've got Fort Boise over on the far west side as well. So that gives us options an either hunt, whichever one we, we get drawn for. So let's take a look at Montour. So everything inside that red border is part of the WMA and we're going to be looking for turkey habitat. So let's zoom in here and we can see there's definitely color differences. This area over here you can tell it's sagebrush. It's rocky, it's steep, 
it is close to the river, so we do have a water source for the turkeys, but other than that, it's pretty inhospitable. They're not, they're not going to have very good luck finding turkeys in that type of terrain. So let's, let's look over here. This area looks flatter. It's more of a floodplain, so we know that it's going to be a lot more level than the sagebrush sides of the, the river channel. So we zoom in here. Now look at, see how this green is all kind of the same color? And there's no real lines or anything in it, no, no bubbles. That tells you that it's grass. And that could be ankle high or it could be up over your head. But it's all the same height and it's all about the same color. But then we come over here, see that color change, that line? And see how there's kind of some bubbles and splotches in there? That tells you there's getting to be some brush in there. You're going to have, have some shrubbery and small trees. And then see how here we have more splotches with a dark line. Splotches and lines. Splotches and lines. That tells you that that's more of a three-dimensional object. It's something that's got some height to it. Those are trees. And remember, we want to look for mature trees that have large horizontal branches for the turkeys to roost in. Some and, and you can't necessarily tell that from this satellite imagery, but we'll keep looking around. See if there's anything that, that kind of stands out to us a little more. Here's one of the parking lots for the WMA. Yeah, there, see, you can tell. Those are big trees because they've, they've got kind of that broccoli look to them, and then there's a big shadow on the side. This other stuff, you know, not as tall, but still brushy, and then... Right there along the edge of the river, that's likely going to be willows. So, again, they're not very tall, but they're going to be dense and thick, just like all the other brush around it. So we'll bump our way back out over here. Now this side of it, this looks to be more upland game-ish. This, this you can tell there's a lot more variance in the grasses. There's a lot more space between trees. So we'll go to this top parking lot here. Yeah, we've got some nice big cottonwoods along the river. You can tell that, you can see that they're, they got that three-dimensional look with the shadows around them, so you know that they're big trees. We'll go back this way. Lots of brush. Some more trees along the river. Yeah, that's looking like a pretty good place to look for turkeys. So let's call this parking lot home base where we're gonna park the car and go out on foot and take take a look at things and that's another good stand of some pretty big trees over here and they're not far from the parking lot so one of the things that we've talked about with this hunt is taking our young kids and so because of that we want to limit how far we're gonna make them hike because I mean you can't be bushwhacking with kids they they don't really put up with that very well. So let's see if we can do some measurements here and see just how far we want to kind of push the kids and, and get out there. Let's say, um, let's do a quarter mile from this parking lot. So we want to measure here and then we're going to do it in miles. So we'll click and pull a line out. You can see there on the on the left side of the screen it tells you how far you've gone. So we got it out to a quarter of a mile. So we know that that distance from there to the river about is a quarter mile. It doesn't really like to let you keep different shapes on there, but you know, it you can do a line and a circle and that's about it. So let's put a circle on here and measure out that same quarter mile so we know that it's the right size. Okay, so now we know everything within that circle is a quarter mile from the parking lot. So it should be, you know, a, a decent distance for the kids. Um, the biggest problem is the only way you get to keep these circles, the you know, the measurements, is if you print this off for yourself that's a huge waste of ink. I mean really, you don't need to print this out. And even that 
other clump of trees we spotted. That's right at the edge of that quarter mile, and where it's the gravel road, that should be easy enough to get to. No, no problem for the kids. So save yourself the ink. Don't bother printing these. You have other resources available, which is something we're going to get into. Let's jump over here to Google Maps. Again, you know, we we can zoom right in on things. It's got better resolution than the Idaho Hunt Planner. I mean, you can you can get right down in there and and tell a little bit better what things are. Like you can tell those are big trees, great big cottonwoods, and that's most likely Russian olive right there. Um, what else do we got? That, Another big cottonwood there, and looks like we got a big conifer right by the road. So you get a lot more detail in the satellite imagery from this, but you don't have any of the measurement capabilities. Oh, look, see, we found a a fallen tree. You know, if we want to know how big that tree is to see if it's really a mature tree or not, we don't have a way to measure that. So we'll hop over to Onyx. Onyx is a paid subscription. They give you a ton of information and not all of it is very helpful. For example, one of their big selling points is that they tell you who private property landowners are. Um, we, you know, we're focusing on hunting a WMA so we don't need to know that. But now look, you don't get to pick what type of pattern or how uh, transparent it is and you can see it's really gonna mess with you trying to look at things and figure out what they are by having that overlay on there so we're gonna turn it off okay and then again we can measure you can change the line color the style the weight but no matter what you do to it it will only measure in yards and you only get a straight line. I've emailed them, I've asked them, I've tried to prompt them into changing that so that you have more usefulness in it, but it we'll see if they ever do it. I don't, I don't know. So we'll flip over to Google Earth. Again, another free service. You can download the program and there are a lot of they're, I believe, KMZ files. They're files you can download from the internet that will add layers to Google Earth that you can turn on and off just like with Onyx and, and the Idaho Hunt Planner that comes in really handy. So let's measure. See, we can do a circle and we can change how um, or what units we're measuring that circle in. So again, we'll we'll throw it out to a quarter mile. Right about there. So we know everything within that area is going to be within the limits of, of what we think the kids can handle. And then we can save it. Save it in your temporary um, places. You know, you can name it whatever you want, but you know, let, let's go back to that tree. Zoom way in here on this tree. Let's see if that's really a mature tree or not. Let's see how big these trees really are. So we'll draw a line, and we want to measure it in feet. And we'll go from about where we think the end of it is to the other end of it. That tree is 48 feet. That's a mature tree. That's going to be a great big tree. And it looks like the other trees around it are probably about the same size. I mean, look, look at the shadows they're throwing off. Those, those are going to be big, big mature trees. The other thing that we can do is you can change the date. You can even change the time of day. Um, so it'll change the angle and, and everything, the shadows of the trees. But let's go back in time and see what we can find. Let's try one more. Oh, there we go. This is April. So this is likely what it's going to look like come April when the first hunt opens. Okay, we can see here again the shadows from these trees. Those are big mature trees. 
Not a lot of leaf out on them yet. Lots of, of good open area. Hopefully there'll be toms out there strutting around for us. Then you can tell there's some smaller brush stuff and some more big trees along the river. Yeah, that's uh, let's go check it out. All right, so we've made it to the spot where we want to look around and see if we can find anything about turkeys and uh. Right back that way is the bigger trees in the river, so we're going to head that way and see what we can find. Ready? Ready. PSA time, guys. All you pheasant hunters, pick up your shells. Good grief. So what are the things in habitat that we're looking for with turkeys? Well, see these trees behind me? They're all spindly, they're young, and they don't have very many horizontal branches. So those aren't very good trees for turkeys. What else did they like? They like big open meadows where they can rut, especially in the springtime. The turkeys will go out on full display. And then there, back towards the river, we've got some big mature trees. They've got lots of horizontal branches that are big enough for the turkeys to roost in at night. So let's go check those out. So we made it over by these trees. See, there's some young ones, kind of spindly, not much good for turkeys these big old scraggly ones with these big horizontal branches those are the ones the turkeys like because it's easier for them to grip, get their feet wrapped around it so they can go to sleep if it's little skinny branches they don't really like it they'd rather be up higher off the ground but still that that branch is about eight feet off the ground and it's a lot better than being on the ground especially at night Keep looking around. Okay, we got some feathers on the ground. A few more off over that way. And if we look right up above us, scraggly old tree, big horizontal branches. So that tells you that there's been at least one bird roosting in this tree at night. They kind of preen themselves and get cleaned up and look nice for the ladies come springtime. So this might not look like much, but see how the grass is just a little bit torn up in this spot? You can see bare dirt. It may not necessarily be from turkeys, but they'll scratch in the ground like that to find bugs. And if you can find spots like that, and spots like this around logs where they can find little bugs, you know you're in a good spot for a turkey because they like to come here to eat. See again, it's been scratched and tore up, but they're looking for bugs and things in the grass. And the uh, the tree we saw from the satellite images, this is that tree, and you can tell it's a good sized mature tree. And <clears throat> when they're laid over like this, birds typically don't roost on them because any kind of predator, a raccoon or a fox or really anything, they can just hop up on the trunk and walk their way out to where the birds might be. So they usually don't mess with trees like that. For reals, y'all, clean up after yourself. You're an adult. So there's our big trees. And out here's the open meadow where winter snow has packed down a lot of the grass. And so it makes a nice open area where the toms can come out and strut and the hens will be able to see them. It's a bunch of angry turkeys. The turkeys are responding to the geese that are flying over. It's 
So that's a uh, trick for you. If you're trying to locate turkeys, most people will do like a hoot owl to try and get a shot go gobble out of the toms. Another thing you can try is a turkey call. You just give a couple honks and see if the turkeys will reply. I didn't quite catch all of that, but there's a house just up there. And the guy just ran a bunch of turkeys out of his yard. I think they were in his garden. Okay, so we're out on the other edge of our quarter mile circle. And that's that other group of trees that we wanted to take a look at. So we're gonna cut across through this field and check them out. Wading through the grass as tall as you are. How about you pick a trail and stay on it? Trail. Okay, follow it. You just gonna make your own trail? Yeah. You see the big nest? Yeah. We'll see if he keeps screeching as we get closer. You trying to call to him? Uh -huh. Oh, look, deer poop. Ew. <laughs> That's how you know we're close to the deer. All right, kiddo. How do you know if deer tracks are fresh? Cause they. Cause of how they look. Yes. You can't always tell, but when you can see the snow is taking the mud off of the hooves, you know they are fresh. So we made it over to the other clump of trees. There's some decent ones in there. A lot of this spindly straight up and down type trees. But there's also a handful of these giant old trees. Lots of horizontal limbs. Let's see if we can find any scratches or turkey feathers in there. That's all the shotgun shells we picked up today. What do you think about that? Guys, clean up your shotgun shells. You're a big kid. That's a good point, kid. So we made it back after kind of making our circle through all the big trees. We did pick up one nice turkey feather. You can tell it's definitely worn. So hopefully we can put in for this hunt and get drawn so we can come get us a turkey in a couple months. So we talked about using a owl hoot to see if you can get a shock gobble out of turkeys. They sell those. You can buy them. <laughs> nope, no gobbles. Another thing that can get turkeys to gobble is, well, the sound of gunshots. They either gobble or they can get real quiet. So, if you're out of season or you're just trying to find out if there's turkeys in the area, get you a bullwhip.
Did you hear that, kid? I think there's a turkey across the river. All right, so we didn't see any turkeys, but we heard quite a few. We found some roosting spots, a fe some feathers, and places where they've been scratching and walking around. So hopefully we can come back in the when it's turkey season. This area is a controlled only spring turkey hunt. So we'll put in for that and see how lucky we get. Life and time wait for no man. So get cracking.